everybody, and we'll just uh, kind of address that elephant in the room of in less than a week. <laughs> Sorry, Trevor, you might have to edit this out. In less than a week. Uh, yeah. Slide of the week. Love it. Yeah, we're, our, our little safety blanket is gone. Um, but we're going to touch on just certain things, um, what you want to start with, and where to find things, options on setting up your views, the Realm Waffle, the CMA, you know, time permitting, I, I don't know if we'll get into that, but we'll get into the basics of your contacts, the list that you currently have in Stratus that you do need to move over because if you do have your saved lists and carts and searches, as of the 30th, they're gone. You, you won't be able to do anything with them and you'll have to kind of re-enter all those details into Realm if you can, you know, remember what they are. Um, so let's just, uh, let's just start. Basically, these first steps, we're going to move, I'm going to show you quickly where you go. We're going to log in. How do you move your stuff from Stratus into Realm? And it is super, super simple. Um, the only thing to note is there's a little number four there, save your CMAs. Any CMAs um, that you've currently done in Stratus uh, will not be able to be read in Realm. You can't move them. You can't import them. The only way that you can keep a copy is to download them. Um, and so you would download a hard copy. If you want to upload those original CMAs in terms of if you did a buyer or a seller CMA and they're a current contact in Realm, we're, we have the ability to upload documents to the client profile. So I can show you those, but with the CMAs currently in Stratus, you'll have to download them to retain a copy. And again, once uh, the 30th rolls around, all those CMAs that you, that you have done whether from day one or the last couple of weeks that you might refer to, they won't be available anymore. All right. So let's pop into Stratus. Okay, so you log in, same screen, you go into Stratus. Um, as soon as I can... Oh, sorry, guys. I was logged in. Does anybody love all these two factor authentications for everything we do? Oh, all right. Here we go. So, your dashboard. This is pretty much where all the, the magic happens. It'll show you your market areas that you set up, any current listings, your recent searches, any of your saved lists. We'll get, we'll get to that. So the first thing you want to do when it comes to your list searches and contacts, the way that you access that is you hit your profile picture right up there. These fundamental lists are, are in the settings section. So you would go to settings and right here you have your information that you can import. For instance, here's your, here's your lists of people or your shopping cart, sorry. Um, and whatever lists you have there, you would just click. You can do, a if you have more than one list, you would select all of them and you would add them to the realm likes. You don't want to replace them because they're going to replace your current favorites list that you have in realm and you just want to add them. You hit the button and it's added those 25 likes on the favorites to realm. Um, I've already done the contacts so it's it's no longer here because it actually already moved it so you won't see it but there will be a, a contacts portion there that you can move your contacts over. Same principle applies to your Stratus searches. Um, and then you would just import. I just need to move this window. If you want to rename it at that point, you could. 
and you're just going to hit the save and it'll eventually move them over. It, it, it takes a few minutes. It's not quite as quick, um, but that's all that you have to do with your contacts and your searches. You just access it through here, go to your settings and just move your information. That's about it. Super simple. Um, what we're going to do is just head over to the bash dashboard again. So this will always take you back to the dashboard. Um, this is a universal, this is your universal search. It's not where you do your targeted search, but if you had a one-off property that you were looking at and you knew it was Michael Power 1812, you can most certainly pull it and it'll pull that listing for you. It's just a quick snapshot to, to get in and target, you will have to use the actual search feature. Um, when you use the search feature, it's gonna open up all your parameters where you can do your filters. And we'll get to go back home again to your dashboard. Um, just like we have a waffle with our, our Century 21 tools and accessing Hub 21 and back at Umedia, testimonial tree, all, all of that good stuff. There's also a waffle, I'm gonna just call it a waffle for Realm. So here you're going to have all your menu options accessible on where everything is. If you add edit your own listings and upload your own listings for those who even create drafts for the front desk and then send um, paperwork later, that's all in your add edit. Um, the CMA is what, that's where you'll get your CMAs, notice pages. You would set up your, your target market areas um, Trev maps, anything that you would need to access, you're going to find in this waffle. Um, in addition to a section where you get your training webinars and also your training videos. Um, there are a few different ways that you can get additional knowledge base know how. These are definitely, you know, the two top picks. Realm has a great little Vimeo site that has short clips, five to 10 minute videos on you know, really targeted topics. So we'll, we'll share the links with all those. And of course, you know, we're gonna try to help you through it as much as we can because this is a big change. Stratus has been around for 20 years. It, it's come to the point where that contract is just, you know, it's, it's not being renewed and the system really isn't scalable and isn't intuitive to provide what Realm is able to provide. Um, I, I have heard people saying sometimes it's slower pulling results because it's working real time. So as you're, you know, changing parameters and filters and adding criteria and depending on, you know, the, the, the length of time you want to pull results for, it can be slower but the output of information that you're getting and ease of access, whether it's desktop or mobile, um, it, it, it's pretty different in comparison to what, you know, you, you could have done with, with TREP. Um, that's it for, that's it for your, for your waffle. Does anyone have any, any questions or if you want, just put your questions in the, in the chat and we can go through everything at our little Q&A session at the end. So one thing I noticed, so here the waffles should be in alphabetical order. Agreed. There's still a lot of things that need to be simplified for the end user. And one thing that I will tell you is Realm is Realm and Terranet, the Treb help desk, they are all really quick with getting back to you in almost real time. Um, Realm, if you ever have suggestions or something that just isn't making sense, whether it's a map you view, you know, clicking this, the chat button, going to the health center and the, the show me how, it, it is a big help. And they're constantly reviewing tickets. They're constantly adding new things that'll help. So hopefully, yeah, alphabetical order would be great. I particularly don't like all these different color coded. They just don't make sense to me. But um, yeah, anyhow, moving, moving on to searching. So 
searching, what I like about Realm is that there are so many different ways to search. We obviously have our, our standard search where we're gonna we're gonna open it up in a minute and go through and go through the filters. Um, but there's, you know, you're in a specific area and you want to jump to that location in terms of what's happening in and around your area. You could do current listings around me and then drill it down to what's happening. You know, um, these are things that you can also set up if you have yeah, a listing. Yeah. Oh, Holly. Um, that's one way to search. Another way is, you know, your client says, oh, I was driving by. I saw a house near, you know, Dundas and Queen, but I'm, I'm not sure what the exact address was. And I guess there is nothing at Dundas. Well, let's go here. Queen and Main. Oh, hold on a second. We'll clear that. And you, you can go to the intersections. Um, you can also add the, you can also add the address and it'll take you there. I'm not sure why. Oh, you know why? You have to put the city. <laughs> Sorry, that was my fault. So Dundas and Queen, I should be able to. The city was the most important part. So it'll kind of pin where that jump to area was. And at least you're kind of in that general area of where your client thinks they may have seen something. Or if, you know, you have a particular listing, you want to see what else is in there, it'll it'll drill it down and you can search that way. The, I won't go into these. The most common search that you're going to do is this search function here. So this is your search button and all of these little tabs are where you're gonna enter your criteria. If you wanna start with location, again, you can do it by MLS if you have it. You can do it by an area, municipality or community. The difference with Realm is that you don't have to have um, a municipality to search community. You don't have to have an area to search a municipality. If you wanna search in Unionville, then you would just type in Unionville. You don't have to know that it's in and around Markham. Um, same with the communities. If you know that you wanna search Glencairn and Simcoe, that's all you have to do is choose Glencairn and it's gonna take you to that boundary map for Glencairn. Um, does anyone have any questions about about that. So sometimes, let's say, I'm gonna do it this way. You can do simple multiples. If someone, one of your clients is looking in Brampton, but they're undecided because prices are a lot cheaper in Niagara, let's say Lincoln. And then, you know, maybe they want the beach life and they're thinking they could go up to Wasega. You would just put in all your all your mapped areas. It'll block them out, and then target your price points. And the way that you would do that is you want to come here, and you're going to go to for sale and available. I would recommend keeping your availables and unavailables separate if you can, especially if you want to see solds within a certain date. If you want to see your solds and sales together of that area and you don't need to drill it down to a time frame, you can absolutely use this. It's defaulted and it'll go back to 2021. If you want additional listings to the archive, I think it goes back to 1986, 1980, it says 1980, but I it could be 86, 87. It'll give you all your archives. If you wanna pull sold listings, particularly with a date range, then you would just choose unavailable and that'll allow you in the filters to actually put a date. Um, you'll see this date here. You can do the sold date. Um, if you were to do them together, Typically, it, yeah, see that sold date, I think. 
sorry guys, typically you're not able to choose the soul date. But with that said, I'm wondering, because they're constantly doing changes, and this was a little note that I brought up a couple of days ago with support. So it could be, I could be wrong, and I stand corrected, that they've actually changed it and added it as a field so that you could now do your searches for available and sold and target the sold dates. So yay, that's that's a win. And you can see that they are they are working quickly because this wasn't up there a few days ago. Um, Let's go back to the filters. Same same fields that you've had with with Stratus. Um, a, a couple of key differences is when you were searching for bedrooms and bathrooms in Stratus, you all you had to do was do two plus, and it would pull any listing that had two or more bedrooms. Realm is a little bit different in the sense that if you're ever looking for multiples that are two plus, whether it's bathrooms, parking, washrooms, you do have to do two, three, four, and five plus. And that'll pull in the listings that have any of that particular amenity over two. If you were just to do two, three, or four, it's not particularly going to catch all of the parameters same thing if you do five plus it's not going to catch any of the two threes or fours and there we go let me go back here um one other thing um does anyone want to see anything else on searches while i'm just doing this really quickly Anyone? No? Okay, cool. Christina? Yeah? Um, one thing that I have with searches is when I'm looking at my searches, like let's say I got 50 searches, and I want to find one based on what the search is called. Based on what your search is called? Searching by the client. Okay. So How do you do that? Well, so your contacts would be would be set up, right? And I'm thinking that your lists are added to your contacts because all your lists that you have. So if you if you go up here and you hit contacts, it's going to take you to this main page. This main page also holds your lists. Any list that you would have is going to populate here. If I were to click on, you know, one of the contacts, whatever list I had created in terms of a list, a search, um, if they've accepted the, you know, if they've accepted the Realm invite, their lists and searches and any favorites that they've added will also show here. So that's where you would see that list. If I did a list for, let's say, upcoming and I wanted test client to get it, you're going to assign that list to the test client. So whatever list or searches you have created will show up in your client card. Is that what you were looking to, to find was those lists? Uh, not really. You know what? It's something I'll, I'll look at at another time. It's so okay. what, Sorry. So just, no, just repeat the quote. Then just. Can so, the, so rather than looking it up by the client, looking it up by the name of the list. It would be right here. List. So you hit your contacts. This is how you're going to find it. You hit contacts. All of your lists will be here. So what if you have like 300 lists? How, you're, how going you to have, you're going to have 300. You're going to have 300 lists. They're so all going to, to be here. You'd have to read through each of those 300. You well, search. Your most recent, your Z to A, A to Z. Um, but this is this is where you're going to find them all in one spot. Um, that's why it's obvious it's much easier that when you're doing that list or that search for the client, that that list is part of that client's profile, yeah. right? Because if I'm doing this property and I want to, you know, add it to my test client, I always know that, okay, that, that property that I searched or that new search result is going to show up in my test property list. 
um, on your particular dashboard, they're going to be all listed like this. And it's up to you how you how you sort them. How did you get there? I, I can't recreate that. Um, these lists, you go to contact. Contact yeah. right up here. Do you have lists? Do you have contacts? I'm not sure. Like Okay. Well, I, I went there. I just have, when I press that, it just me comes up in my... Yeah. Well, that is you. This is your, this, this is the work that you have done. So gotcha. you will come up. That's the first thing you want to see, because this is what's showing your, your lists, your searches, oh, there's, okay. EMAs that you have done, any yep. documents you may have uploaded. Um, okay. let's say, right. So that, that's where you will find it in, okay. in a quick, in a quick snapshot is through contacts. Okay. And you either search in your list, yes, all 300, or you drill it down to the client on who that search relates to. Okay. okay. No problem. Can um, you show, Christina, sorry. Um, yeah. I, mean, <laughs> I wanted to see how with your lists, um, let's say the, the top list that you have, like the top one, and you want to put that to one of the clients on the left. How do you do that? Okay. Can you so, do that again, please? I, yep. So you would just open up that list by clicking the title of that list. Um, let me just, I typically like to see these in a table view. Almost every single window in terms of your search or how you view them, you can always change the view. Um, I just, you know, I, just being a Stratus user, I like seeing the tables, picture on the left, information on the right. So if you wanted to put all of these listings or target a few, you would select what you want to select. And this is the action button. Everything happens with this button. Whatever the end game is, whether you're emailing, adding a list, a contact, a search, it happens with this button. So we're gonna to go to the action button and we're gonna add this to, let's say your clients are in here. I'm gonna add it to this test client and I'm going to create it. Test list number two. And I'm gonna okay. add it. So it's added all those 50. So now when I come to my test client, to see, you know, what what have I what have I done for them? Let me open them up. What their searches are, all their lists of active searches will be here. You see how there's test list number two. So it's moved all 50 of those listings to this test client. Okay, thank you. No problem. Uh, let's go back here. And I was mentioning the the views, depending on what you're most comfortable with. Let me just open up a listing here. Let me just open. So depending on what your default, I think Realm is set up where the default is typically set up as this customer view. Um, you have your images, thumbnails on the site, on the left, and then you have the whole map on the right. Um, I would recommend that any search that you do and any output that you're using in terms of results, always use something where you're going to have the table or you're going to have a running list um, because what can happen is you might not capture or see everything on that map that actually belongs to that area. Um, and one example would be, let's say, condos. Um, unless you put in a a specific pin and sometimes not even that parcel registration is for that development block it's for that entire condo block so you know you might have a listing um, and someone might have a listing two doors down 
but when you're doing the search solely on the map, they're overlapping and you won't see them. To you, it'll appear as though you're, you know, that listing's not there or there's just one listing. Um, Treb use, uh, Stratus has a feature where, you know, there would be a little cluster, those like red little ball clusters and you would hover over and it would open up a window that showed a list of whatever three or four units were available in that area. Realm is working on that. They just don't have it yet. Um, so that's why I suggest anytime you do your layout, always try to use a layout that encompasses the map and either a running table on the bottom or the, the view on the left-hand side. Because this way you know that at least if you've zoomed in, you know exactly what's going to be in that area. Does that, does that make sense? And it's kind of the same thing with, this is not different with, with Stratus. Stratus was the same way. It Sometimes you would see the property, sometimes you wouldn't. You would zoom out the map. You may see it, you may not. Um, but as long as you always had this running table, you would see what was in that search. That's about it. All right. Um, your contacts, I would recommend creating your contacts, um, obviously, before you, you start a, your contacts or your, we'll call them prospects. Um, they're referred to as contacts in Realm. But create your contact first um, and then start your, start your searches. Um, it's quite simple. Just go to contacts. We're going to add a new client. And we're going to go through all of the screens on, on adding them in. All their information, their email, the source, whatever you have, you're able to put them in. And there's two options that you can either save. If you hit save, that'll save them to your Realm system as a contact. If you hit save and invite, that's going to send them an invitation to start the process of logging in and signing up for their Realm backend site. And this allows two-way communication. Um, it allows them to have favorite, uh, favorites. Um, it's all real time. Any communication that's had through this and the mobile app, you'll always get little notification chats. This will like light up if you have new messages um, from your clients. It kind of allows you to really work quickly, real time with, you know, what it is that they're looking for. Can you do me a favor, please? Can you go to, it said there, Trevor does not have a saved list. Mm -hmm. um, and then it says the search button below. Mm -hmm. I've been struggling. So Trevor doesn't have a saved list yet. So if you click search, yep. that means you're going to create a search and then save that search to Trevor. Okay. Yeah. Let's have a look here. So I'm not going to change any parameters. I'm going to just leave it how it is. Um, so there's our searches. So it's really slow to, I think this is, I actually think this is our Wi-Fi um, because there's not much. It's. This is also the current real estate market. Yeah. <laughs> so here's your, so once you've, you've selected what you, what you wanted to search for Trevor, we're going to save that search and we're going to assign it. I don't know if I put him as a, and I would assign it to Trevor and then I'm going to save it. Now, this is his default search. He can change his default search at any time. Um, and then you also have um, hide from clients. And this will just be 
They won't be able to access your search and make changes to it. They'll still get notifications and they'll still access whatever you've sent them on their dashboard, but they won't be able to go in and change the parameters of the church search you originally set up for them. So I would suggest hide from client because it'll just remove whatever work you did to maybe Uber target, um, you know, whether you drew polygons or circles or had three to four different map areas, I would always suggest hide from client so that they can't access it. And they're still free to create their own. They would still have all the access like they would other than to not manipulate the original search that you, that you put out for them. And then you would just, you, you would just make that search and he'll start getting his uh, notifications. Does that help, Holly? I believe it does. I'm going to just double check. I just, because I have a client that I set up, but it, it's my brother and he doesn't have time to deal with the searching himself. So yeah. um, I, it just seems like he's not getting the emails on the search that I've set him up for. And it's like, you know, Brampton home with a separate entrance and 900,000 and below. And like, yeah. Right. Just... Now, and so has he, uh, has he also set up his back end to realm? No, I haven't invited him to do it because he won't like, there's no, he doesn't have time for that. I'm basically doing the search, but I would like him to get the emails once a day so that when his wife is in the office, she can see the listings he that are should there. be getting them. I, I can't see why he wouldn't. So we'll I'll make a note. We'll take that offline and have a look at why they not may not be getting them. One thing to note that is whether you've set your client up or not on Realm, if they were to ever unsubscribe, whether on purpose or accidentally, you will not be able to add them back in order to receive notifications. This is something that Realm in the back end would have to reconfigure with their consent to put them back on a put them back on an email list. So just one thing to to note. It's always good to have a conversation, you know, with your clients that this is how the system works. You're going to send them an invite. It's, you know, it's hyper intuitive. We can chat back and forth, make your notes on listings. Um, and that way they know that it's coming and they know that, uh, you know, it's, it's a tool that you're using to, it also makes it easier for them actually, other than, than emails, cause it's all just real time. Um, if any changes happen, they're going to see it on their phone and it's a way, you know, to also quick chat with them as well. Uh, let me see. Um, listing cards and favorites. So those are all, they're, they're all drilled down into, into lists. Um, the way you do it, we don't have, we don't really have the shopping cart or, you know, the, the star, if you want to favorite a listing, that's all you do. You choose that heart. It's going to put it in your main likes list, which is the, the favorites list. And then from there you can sort and see, you know, where you're going to move it, or if you're just going to live, leave it in your overall liked dashboard. Um, market stats. If your market areas that you have will be, will be set up here. Um, the way you do that is you can go through again, your waffle and go to your, your market areas. In terms of market stats, um, there's a lot of different ways. I'm gonna do a whole other little topic on it for those that are uber nerdy and like their spreadsheets and, and wanna see um, how, they, how they pull it for an area, um, we'll, we'll, get, we'll get into that. But uh, your sold reports and market stats you can pull here. Basically, you can do the latest. If it's a certain certain area you're looking for, we wanna know Brampton, what's happening. We're gonna search. Here's the current sold stats as of right now, the latest for the month. And we wanna drill that down further. We click on Brampton 
and it's going to populate everything by category. So you'll see that these are the sales up until July 23rd for the month of kind of what's happened. 34 townhomes, it gives you average, median, uh, medium, and the um, price. Just a good little, just a good little thing to have. You can print it, you can export it, um, take it with you on your little, on your presentations, but just something if, you know, a quick stat to have to add to your listing presentation or your CMA, um, and it'll look like this. It already comes pre-branded pre with your information, your photo, and then it just gives the, the snapshot. Quick little, quick little report. Could I ask a question? Sorry, but okay. um, it is about the statistics. So if I'm um, looking at, um, you know, trying to compare a property to figure out what the pricing is, or let's say even give someone a market update. If I choose five properties that I feel are, are important to my client, is there a way that I can see what their statistics are? You know, so in Stratus before, you could click on that um, button at the top that would give you the statistics. So the average price, how many days on market for those specific listings. Are you able to do that on Realm? Because I couldn't find it. So typically, let me have a look here and see if that's added. If someone... That's its history. Let me have a, a look. That's pretty much. I don't see it here for that particular listing or for that group of listings. Because I'm meaning for a group of listings like so in Stratus again. Um, you used to be able to click on the button just above the listing where you could see the address history and you can, um, and then you could click on the statistics. And when you clicked on the statistics, it would tell you there are 16 houses on this list and they sold for 98% of asking. And now I can't find that when I have multiple chosen. Um, probably. And with Stratus, was it multiples chosen? Yeah. Okay, I don't, I'm not, I'm not sure on that one, Holly. Um, Stefan or Art, do any of you know how to, how to access this? Where is it in, where is it in, in Stratus? What, what's the feature called, Holly? It, it so was it's just, just that if you, button? if you go to Stratus and you pull up, look at, I don't know, five houses that are for sale at the top. Sorry, I don't have it open right now. Okay, um, we're, just, we'll take it. We'll take it offline. So just, okay. We'll, we'll take it offline because I can't uh, deep dive into it right now. Um, but we'll have to, I'll have to figure out how to do that. Hey, Christina, if you just click that top right blue arrow next to the searches blue button, it, yeah. Whatever you have selected, there it says statistics and counts. Hold on. Which one? Like when you click search and you bring up uh, a, your map and you yeah. select multiple properties, at the top right, it says layout. There's a drop down. Then there's the searches button. And then the far right blue arrow, if you click. The action that, button? Yeah, that one. Exactly. So when you have a few properties. Uh, oh, select, you're right. And you click that one, it says statistics and counts. You are right. Anna. Thank you. Did did you see it, Holly? Mine's there. It is right there. I can't see it. Oh, Look at my second. screen. Okay. Yep. See that stats and and counts. So let's. I'm not sure how this is. Let me just select these three. I'm just having a hard time with Wi-Fi today. Um, but thank you, Adrian. Stats and counts.
I'm just going to search these three. And then let's pull it up here. Here you go, Holly. And that's just based on these particular three listings that I have pulled. Okay, that's awesome. Okay. Thank you, Adrian. Um, a couple of other features, just, uh, just a couple of changes that, that have happened in terms of how we do open house so that they appear on um, realtor.ca. They have kind of got rid of the, the member profile. The way that you access it is when you first log into Trev, you'll have this moving menu up here and you're going to go and navigate towards the public open house section. And whatever listings you have, they're going to populate. You're going to hit, I don't have a listing, but you're going to hit add a listing, type in the date, time, and that'll autom save it. And that'll automatically put it onto realtor.ca and MLS. Um, Another thing as well is in terms of training, I know we're, we're drilling it. There's a great uh, a PDF that, um, that has everything right at everyone's fingertips. I would recommend that, you know, you keep it, keep it nearby, access it. We're going to do our best, obviously, to make sure I just put it in the chat. We're going to make sure that we can, you know, walk everyone through because we do understand it's going to be a learning process um, but there are so many videos tutorials uh, treb just rolled out their own little prop text training which is um, an lms system right now there's only one module in terms of what's available but they do have a, a basics of getting started with realm and i would recommend that it's 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 super easy. They drill down. It's interactive. There's there's quizzes. Not that you know you need to do a quiz, but it just helps shift um, your understanding of the program of how to use it. Like for instance, this is their first one. It's 45 minutes, and it's how to access it. Different ways to search, how to share, uh, share and save, and you just go through, navigate through the motions. You resume the course and it'll just then, start. If you select search listings, it'll walk you through. You There's the little call outs that, that you can you directly participate in that'll take you into you another scenario or you um, situation that you might use this function in. No so, highly you recommend are, you may um, taking a little walkthrough on that. Um, I think that's I'm gonna, all, that's all I'm going to do for now. Um, and I, I think, you know, we'll, we'll start maybe doing a little bit more and um, have some brainstorming sessions. Uh, I, I know a couple of agents are organizing those in the office, just it's easier to talk to hammer out details, you know, so why not share what you've learned, even if it's a little win, that's still a big win to someone who might not be quite as comfortable with this. So I think that's it for my portion of this realm training. Does anyone have any questions? Nobody? Christina. Stefan? One of the future requests I had requested in realm was for the same pull down I, under the CMA part in Stratus, we had the pull down list of, you know, when you're adding different uh, adjustments to the properties. Yes. Yep. I, the last time I was in it last week, I still didn't see the pull down. That's a, that's a big one. Uh, and I'm pretty sure there's quite a few changes that, that are happening with it. Um, that, that, pull down menu, um, a square footage section that pulls it directly from the listing to the CMA, that's not available. Square feet is a field that you would have to add. Um, so there's, you know, a listing range. There's a few things I think they're working on in terms of um, adding features. I just think that's a, that's a bigger component um, than, you know, maybe, a, a small a small feature add-in so yeah. just keep, 
just keep sending your suggestions. Your workaround right now, it still works. You just have to add in right. the custom field. Yeah, the, the part two of that was if I add a custom field for one of the houses, I want it to go add them across all. all of my, right? <laughs> Correct. For all the comparables, yeah. So anyways, three to five comparables is suffice. <laughs> if, you're, if, you're, if you're doing more than that, Anyhow, um, but yes, if you would have to add that custom field, for instance, square footage, yeah. it's not going to pull it from the listing because there's no field built into it. So you would have to add that custom CMA field of square feet to all the comparables. Yeah, yeah. It, it is uh, It is a downside right now, but for sure, I think they're going to, they'll come up with the changes. Thanks. All right. Well, I think if no one has anything else, um, one thing I will share if you want to scan it, I've created this little um, QR code here. Does everyone see that? Because I know things change on, you know, what kind of help or what kind of training we deliver. We want to make sure that we're delivering targeted information as a whole to get you what you need. So I'd love it if you guys can scan this, if you have any suggestions or any problems that you have been having or any, um, you know, secret features that, that you have come across, definitely use that as a sharing platform so that we can organize that and be able to deliver it to, to everyone. Christine, I'd like to ask a question maybe to you or to the group. Um, many times I've, I've come across a new person who is not a contact, who I have no relationship with, and they say, I want you to send me listings. I send them a link. Obviously, then, after you sent them the RICO information guide. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. No, of course they did that first, of course. <laughs> the, um, so when they click on the link, it asks them to log into Realm or create a member account. Correct. Um, is anyone else experiencing that? Now, yeah, well, because well, because they would have to, it's not recognizing them because they really didn't get that invite to create the back end. Now, before, I will show one thing, and but this will only relate to like a single listing, one kind of done at a time, and then I'll open it up to see if anyone else has been able to, to circumvent it. Let me just go back to this. If I go to a listing and say this is the one that they wanted um, information about, when I click this email button without me having to send it through this system, let's say you wanted to text them, you wanted to send them an email from, you know, from whatever platform it is you wanted, right here, every time you email a listing, now this is just singular at the moment, but it creates a link. So if you copy this link address, what's gonna happen is they're not gonna have to do any of that signing in. It'll just pull up the public facing listing for them to view. So they'll be able to view it without any sign-ins or accounts or any of that information. Sorry, how did you populate that link? So just by hovering here where the, yeah. where the photo, this is, it's already created this link. So if you right click, let me right click, and we're gonna copy the link address, okay? And then we can open up a, a new window or if you're gonna paste it into, your, into, your, into a text or into an email, and it'll mm -hmm. populate that public facing listing for, for whoever you're, you're sending it to. They'll be okay, able to. Okay. Yeah. Um, anybody else? Do you have you found a way in order to get this delivered without having to go through a whole sign up or adding them as a contact, as as Ryan was mentioning? Most of my clients send me links on House Sigma and those, so they are sending me listings. Yeah. I have not. Yeah, yeah I have not encountered this. Lately, at least. Yep. All right. 
Okay, so I think then that's it for today. Oh, can I ask you one last question before? Uh, yeah. I'll let you. So if, let's say I'm driving in a particular neighborhood and I see their for sale home, like on House Sigma, if I open up the map, it immediately populates that area where I'm in. Uh, does REM do the same thing? Can I see? Sorry, sorry, Parth, what, what was that? Can you so let's say that? if I'm driving, okay, yeah. in a particular neighborhood and I see a for sale sign, if I open an app on my phone, how Sigma it will give me those listings where I am, right? Like I can quickly see that. Can I do the same thing on Rail? Well, Realm has the the jump to search for current location. But uh, if I have my settings like on, uh, they can track where I am. Can I still see them? Well, on I my... don't know what your I don't know what your settings are. If you use your location tracking, yeah, um, location tracking is on always. Let them know where I am. So, so then, you, if you jump to that search option of my current location, then it should pull up your current location and what listings are available. Okay, I will check that next time. Okay. Um, Ricky, I we're already just after 12. I see your multiple rep topic. Um, really, I'll, I'll go into it quick because it really is only touching, it's touching on the forms the timing, what needs to be filled out, and what we're kind of noticing is maybe the misuse or uh, of the form and not quite um, filling in the, the right information. Um, the conf of rep, I, you know, it's actually gotten a, a lot better um, in terms of, of filling it out. So I'm not gonna really focus on that, but what I will focus on is the multiple representation acknowledgements whether they be the buyer or the seller. Um, we're seeing a lot of these come back with everything initialed. Um, we, we just can't have everything initialed. There are scenarios on, on what you should be initialing. Um, this, this first section here is explaining multiple representation, even though that's explained in so many documents before, the first section here is explaining it, the brokerage uh, duty to be partial, what can be shared, what can be not be shared. The two bubbles further down are the situation here is particularly multiple rep and designated rep. So whether you're representing the buyer and the seller under designated rep, that is multiple representation. If Ryan is representing the buyer and Ricky is representing the seller under designated rep, no, there is no multiple representation in that point. So this, this form is, is, is not required. The second bubble is whether, you know, we have a mix of both representations. Prior to December, we were always brokerage rep. We do have listings who haven't been transferred over that are still brokerage representation. Um, so this could definitely arise where one of our listings is a brokerage rep situation, but then maybe one of our buyers is designated because that's how they were signed up. So that's where this would apply. Um, again, a final initial by the seller that they've been explained what is happening and that their agent is representing more than one client. This can't happen after, after the fact. Um, this form and the timing of it should be prior to the offer. When you know you're gonna be drafting an offer, when you've had a conversation with a buyer or a seller and you're getting into that situation where you might be preparing an offer, this is the consent that has to take place prior to that offer being drafted and 100% without a doubt prior to any of this being signed with an offer. As per RICO, they're not taking lightly to the misuse of this form and the timing of it. So I can't stress enough, get it signed um, before you're you know, sending your offer to be signed via DocuSign. Does anyone want to have questions about these forms? 
I think we're seeing the the use of them. Um, it's becoming almost like second nature, and it's just kind of learning that uh, that they're there and and when they need to be used. If I appreciate it, thank you so much. If there's anything else, send me an email. Send Trevor an email. Use our little um, suggestion box, and uh, yeah, I think Wisdom Wednesdays every two weeks. So we'll see you in a couple of weeks.